So we're here with the FOBI 3D here at SID Display Week and um, we're looking at your special display right here. So hi, so who are you? I'm Thomas Burnett. I'm a founder of FOBI 3D. And, uh, and what are we looking at here? This is a true light field display. So it's a full parallax perspective correct uh, light field display. So is it something that can be viewed with a camera or it needs yeah. eyes? No, no, you so can what, view it with a camera. So what am I looking at right here? Uh, well, you're looking at a pyramid uh, moving. So we're animating a, a light field in, in near real time. How is it possible that I can see all these angles by moving around? Well, because we're projecting all those angles. We're projecting the light that would reflect off that object if it was actually there. And so it, it's... How does that work? <laughs> How do you do this? Well, you're not actually seeing me directly, right? You're seeing light reflecting off me and impinging on the lens or your eye. Instead of having that light reflect off me, if you just project that same ray attribution onto the eye or onto the camera, you'll get a perspective correct image. I don't understand. <laughs> so, so do you have a graph you can show some uh, what is going on here? Right, so um, what you're looking at here is is uh, it's, we call it a hogel for a holographic element, but you can consider it a directional pixel uh, in that depending on how you're looking into that micro lens, you're seeing a different ray. And the idea is when you have a, a, an array of these hogels, each having, you know, um, you know, distributing the correct ray information, when you look into the display, you'll see a 3D aerial image. And so, um, if you're familiar with a light field camera, this is sort of the inverse of the light field camera. So light What's a light field one. camera? Well, a light field camera captures the direction and intensity of light in, in, a, in a field, so to speak. And so, a uh, light field display is just the inverse of that. That, uh, How many uh, angles, or you know, it, it seems there, there are different angles. Or? Yeah, so there's there's 12,000 unique views that this display is capable of doing. 12,000. Yeah. From every different angle. Yeah, from every different angle. But there's sure. like an, an area where it's too much, right? Yeah, you're outside of the projection thrust. So how, how big is the projection area? About 90. It's a 90 degree projection thrust. And so is this kind of like the ultimate hologram yeah, kind of? Yeah, it's a holographic display like you see would see in Star Wars. So that is the idea. Since when are you working on this? Well, I've been working on this kind of technology about 15 years, but fovi has been working on it for about three. It's your company? My company. So what's next? Uh, what's, what's the market? Uh, well, what's next is to make larger light field displays, uh, color. Uh, markets are military, oil and gas, medical. Uh, maybe esports visualization, anything where you want to collaborate over complex 3D data. And what are those kind of like squares? Going so you're on? looking at 20 uh, 4K monitor uh, OLEDs that are all tiled together. So 20. It, yeah. So they 4K. haven't. Yeah. It hasn't been color balanced. So you're looking at the non-uniformities of all those uh, those uh, OLEDs. Ah, it's because there, there's a bezel-less small OLED displays? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. But they're all 4K, 4K, 4K? That's correct. There's nothing inside this box, right? Well, there's a, there's a bunch of drive electronics that manages the signals to those OLEDs. It's just flat, is it? Well, it the, like the, there's something in there. No, yeah, there's, it's, it's flat. The photonics is... Uh, Photonics and optics is very, very narrow. This is all drive electronics down here. And what's different on this one? Different, different micro lens. So this has a lot lower spatial resolution, but it has a lot higher angular resolution. And so this, this display can project something uh, taller, but with less detail. And that display can project something with more detail, but less height. Taller? Yeah. Um, because people have been talking about wanting to do holograms for a long time, right? Yeah. So Why is, isn't it like everywhere yet? Well, it's pretty hard to do. This is actually 108 megapixels in, or mega rays in this little box. And so it's quite a phenomenal challenge to you know, control all that light and compute all that light. 108 megapixels? Mm -hmm. Uh, like uh, a 4K is 8 megapixels, right? Yeah. So you have a bunch more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, it, and it's 108 megapixels in a 9 centimeter by 9 centimeter square area. How do you get those tiny 4K displays? Uh, well, Micro OLED actually makes these 4K displays. You know the like micro displays. Kind yeah, of? they're yeah you know, 4K micro OLED displays from Micro from OLED. OLED. <laughs> from, yeah, they're in France. And they fit right here. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had to tile them together. That was complex. But, There's yeah. no bezel. 
Well, they have a small bezel, so there's a there's a relay optic on top of them. You lay your them together so there's no seam. That's correct. And how do you, how do you make a, a huge one in color? How's it, how's, is it we just tile the same more of them. Yeah. Just more of them. Yeah. You need to drive more of them. You need a bigger chipset or something. You need more of everything. More more OLEDs. More driver boards. Is there an FPGA in there? There's uh, six FPGAs in that box. The secret? Which ones are? Yeah, there's uh, some secret sauce in there, but there's five driver FPGAs and there's another. Another FPGA that sort of manages them all. So at some point we all have holograms at home, right? That is the idea. How soon is that? Like in a couple years? Ten years probably. You'll start years. seeing them in your homes. But they always say ten years, right? That's what the joke no. Everybody the here says two years. We're saying ten. You're saying ten. <laughs> But, so 10 years, everybody has one? I would like to see them proliferated in 10 years. And then it feels like somebody is in a room, or what does it feel like? No, you'll get an experience like this where you can sit around a display and watch like a, a football game in 3D with your friends. But you could also feel like your friend is in the room right there? I don't think we're going to get that, that level of fidelity in, in 10 years. I, I, I view it more of you know, maximizing the 3D fidelity of an image volume about six inches deep. And uh, so no matter where I position the camera, there's always an image. That's correct. A perspective correct image, just like in real life. Everywhere. Everywhere. Well, everywhere within the projection freshman. Because there's all these like glasses free yeah. 3D. This is space. a true glasses free. Like, every time you move, it's like yeah. jumping. Yeah, so that has those view zones. This doesn't have zones. This, this projects a field of light, perspective correct light. So how long have people talked about holographic displays? For well, like I mean, 30, 40, 50 years or yeah, something? Yeah, definitely. But why is it not yet? Uh, well, it is kind of hard to put these things together. They it's didn't have 108 megapixel displays back then? Uh, that is true, yeah. <laughs> it's still hard to make them. Yeah. yeah so. so what if a huge company comes by and says, hey, uh, we want to speed it up? Uh, it's all about money now. I mean, the whole reason that we're here is to socialize that this is not science fiction anymore, right? You can make these displays and, you know, there are some challenges, but they're all addressable. And so, you know, we've had some pretty good responses from industry people that could solve a lot of those problems, whether it's computer, photonics, or optics. What do you need to uh, solve? Is twice What's this? Uh, Without saying too many secrets. I think that compute is a challenge, and I think being able to preserve the detail of all these rays when they're angularly distributed is, is also a challenge. So those are the two fundamental things that need to get you know, solved before more commercial adoption. Why is it just yellow? Uh, brightness. Brightness and uh, pixel density. So if you had all colors, it'd be hard to make it look like that. Uh, well, right we now? took a we took a color OLED and we doped all the subpixels to be yellow green, and we picked yellow green because it was brighter that way. But you want to have full color? Yeah, we can do full color. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Where are you based? In Austin, Texas. And uh, so, what's next? What if uh, some of the industry people came over and said, uh, "We really like that. We want to have them." Yeah. So we can uh, make. I think. You know, with the uh, right investment, we can make mobile displays. We can make large tabletop displays and anything in between. You know, I, I think the architecture is the same. It's just where you where you put your engineering dollars. You know this red company? They, red phone. They have a phone. Is that, how does that look? It looks pretty good, actually. But what is their technology? How's well, it different? it's similar to this. I, I, and I, I haven't seen too much of it, but it, it's a single user, uh, you know, light field phone that produces a 3D aerial image. You know, and you, can't, you kind of hold it out here, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, and there's a, other companies working with holograph. Stuff, I right? think, but uh, you know, that company is Leia, and I think they've done a good job on the mobile stuff. I don't know if there's anybody else who's got a full-on, you know, desktop light field display like we do. I think Samsung has has had one in their booth in the past years, but I haven't seen it this year. All right, cool. So looking forward to that at home, right? And everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A couple of years. All right.